Sup guys, Multiplier here. Today I'm going to kind of show you the push in action and in particular uh, basically just going to be recording me working out some complex trail ideas because um, I've got some work to do for push button bang. Got to basically take some of the presets he sent me, some of the massive presets and create some kind of a complex trio, electro kind of melody pattern type things for the demo track. So thought it'd be an interesting example of kind of one way of using the push kind of in action. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd record the whole session, uh, or at least this session to kind of, yeah, see what you guys think and uh, just kind of see me use it and ting. So should be good. Uh, so yeah, first up, what we're gonna wanna do uh, is basically uh, set up Massive as a, an instrument rack or instrument, I forget what they call them. Uh, simply because there's no way to kind of, um, whenever you hit add track here, um, to kind of add a new track, there's no way to choose plug in directly from the list. So we're gonna have to add an instrument rack. Uh, so we're gonna go over to instruments. I think it's over here. Yeah, we're gonna grab instrument rack. Uh, we'll drag it out into a new channel, say. I'm going to delete the first channel, or the audio, because we don't need that. Recording the mic through the GoPro. Um, so we've got our instrument rack, and now what we're going to want to do is go to plugins. I um, haven't actually tried this yet, but apparently this works. Massive VST, grab that dude, drag it in. Um, and then let's go to like a preset or something to kind of use as an example, so we might use it production, new massive presets, PBB, push button bang, electro, terra massive, let's just pick the first one. Cool, so we've got massive kind of up and running in an instrument rack. Um, what we're gonna do is we wanna actually map the macro knobs to the kind of the macro knobs in massive. And if I remember correctly um, from my little experiment earlier, uh, when you change presets, the macro knobs stay assigned, so that should make it nice and easy to kind of flick through presets and keep everything mapped like we want. So we're going to move this out of the way, click configure, boing, and then just basically click through each of these macros. So boing, 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 boing. Lots of boinging. Uh, close that. Close configure. Now to map these macros to these, um, the map, uh, we click map, click map, click map. I haven't done this for like a year now, so I don't really use instrument racks normally, but now I've got to push, I shall be. Shall be rhymes with be. Right, um, cool. So it should be all maps now. Um, I think I pretty much ruined the default uh, mapping. Uh, the, yeah, so I've, I've kind of ruined this preset, but uh, that's fine. Uh, we'll leave that as it is. It should be cool. Um, so then what we're going to do is I should probably test it before I save it, but you know, a task, I like living life on the edge, so we're not going to do that. I'm just going to save it straight away. It's going to hit the save button, and then we're going to save it as massive. Yeah, massive will do. Cool. So hopefully now I can kind of add a new track and add in massive uh, kind of as is. So we're going to hit add track. Uh, hopefully we see massive somewhere in this list. But I know what we need to do. We need to turn off the push and start it again. I'm pretty sure you need to do this to kind of reset as memory type thing. So add track. Um, I don't know where it's going to be. Instrument rack. Oh, there you go, massive. Sorted. It's so instrument rack and then massive's there. And hopefully, we're about to see if it's going to work. Um, so now, um, wait, first of all, I want to make sure I stick a limiter on the master just so I don't accidentally blow up any eardrums. Uh, audio effects. Limiter, double click. Cool. Um, so we'll just get rid of that first massive channel, we don't need that. Cool, so hopefully... Cool. 
seems to work and now hopefully if we choose a new preset everything will stay mapped to where we want uh, so we'll just choose another one animal instinct <laughs> There you have it that's kind of had a map uh, massive accordingly for push did it on the fly sweet uh, so now we have our massive instrument set up so yeah now what we need to do since we need to create basically use all those presets um push button bang sent me to kind of make up make up some ideas for this demo track um first thing we're going to want to do is probably add in some sort of drums just to kind of give us some sort of beat of some kind so um first of all let's probably we should probably do something like change the bpm of the, the main set to 128 and then add a new track uh, to drum rack they're going to choose one of the drum racks oh no going to use a library and choose one of the glitch hop kits that one of the other sample pack labels sent me for another demo track um, just because some of the hits are quite nice. Can't remember what's in which kit, but let's just choose Glitch Hop Kit 2 arbitrarily. Hit green. Right, let's see what this sounds like. Nah, not feeling it, not feeling it. Let's try another one. Nope. No, that's even worse. That sounds cool. I like it. That's got kind of like a heavy complex drive vibe. That's the wrong one, but whatever. Cool. So I'll use that uh, glitch hop kit number five to get going. Um, so we're just going to go to the computer and delete the current massive track. Um, can't remember how to delete tracks directly from Push. Figure that out later. Um, it's cool. Now we got our um, first kind of uh, well, drums kind of added as a track. We're gonna wanna lay out some sort of basic pattern or something, right? So, I don't know. Nice four on the floor. And then we want some sort of clap. Maybe I think you nudge them to the left a bit. Um, we'll bring them forward in time, I guess we'll call it. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna hold all four and nudge them a bit. Was that where they were before? That sounds alright, fuck it. So yeah, got a kick and a snare. Want some sort of off hats. That'll do. That little dude. Wrong place. Ooh. Tweak the volume down a bit. And then maybe, probably want some sort of, I don't know, main kind of hit for the start of the section. That's it. Screw them. I want something more subtle. That I do. Cool. So yeah, just trying it a few different volumes to see if I like that sort of general drums. Sounds sweet, so we're gonna kind of roll with those drums for now. So, should be sweet. So now what I'm gonna do is basically add in a bunch of massive noises and we're gonna kind of chop it up 
um, light complex stroke because that's kind of the uh, what we've been told to do. Uh, remember, we're doing this for someone else, so yeah, we're gonna. In fact, we'll probably leave. Let's just add another track in now. So add another track, and then we'll go over to instrument rack, and then we'll go to massive. Remember, we added a massive as an instrument, which is pretty sweet. And then we're gonna hit green for awesome. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna start off with a preset. So let's uh choose a preset semi-randomly. Well, I'm going to basically choose a preset based on how cool it sounds, so uh, let's have a look. PB Electro Terra Massive, which sounds cool of these. Um, Rising Scream. Right, I'll do. And back to device. I have to just basically twiddle all these so it picks up uh, the, with the macro knobs on the uh, in massive. Cool. So, basic concept how I'm going to work now is um, if you don't kind of know how complex story works, what you have is you have lots of little cool chopped up sounds, but fundamentally they follow all in the same key, they kind of follow a melody type thing. So what we're going to do is the way I'm going to, going to do this thing is I'm going to pick a scale and then I'm just going to kind of quantize my recording and just record kind of little chunks of sound and then kind of add another layer of massive and record another little chunk of sound and kind of keep, I'm thinking everything quantized to a 16th or 32. Um, I'll decide in a minute which one. But for now, I'm going to choose scales, just hit scales, major... I don't know scale, so let's try E. I wonder what that sounds like. It should be right. Whatever, it doesn't really matter what scale we choose. Um, so now everything here will be in the scale of E major, whatever that means. Cool. Um, so yeah, should we set up quantize? So we hit quantize, we'll see what's going on. So quantize to 16, that's cool. Quantize amount 100, that's cool. 0% swing, that's cool. Record quantize is off, so maybe we want to turn that dude on. And now, theoretically, when I record out like the right note at the right time by bashing it away on here, it will record it to the 16th kind of quantization interval. But we can always check it by looking it up manually afterwards. So, should be cool. So yeah, let's get our. Let's uh, first of all find us like a sound we like by twiddling these macros. <laughs> That sounds cool. But so yeah, bash out play so we get our kicks going. Oh no, I it wrong. Uh, that's alright. Just close down massive, so double check the quantization, make sure that's working. So yeah, it looks like it's on the grid. Um, now what I don't know is whether or not um, push button bang uh, set up the presets that have any velocity information. So. We should go have a look in the presets to make sure to see if he's doing any of that sort of stuff. So, if you're wondering whether or not there's any, yeah, it looks like there is some velocity information. So, 
wherever you see that V in the macro control, that's kind of velocity information. So um, see he has done some velocity stuff. So um, just something to kind of be aware of when I'm kind of bashing out my patterns now. So should be cool. Um, that should be fine. What you will do is something I should have checked earlier is check when I'm recording whether or not it's recording to a fixed length or not. So let's have a look. Um, two bars, which is what we want. We'll have like a two bar loop. And now we click fixed length. It means it will everything we record kind of will just stay in this two bar length, which is cool. So yeah, we have this. What we could do is properly quantize it because it's recorded the first note but not the end. So, so we'll, uh, I don't know, hit quantize. It doesn't record the end note. Not sure why it's doing that. Um, maybe we'll leave it for now. Uh, sweet, whatever. Yeah. Let's uh, add something else in. Let's find add track, massive. Let's choose a preset. Um, and come up with another, another cool sound. Uh, velocity surprise. Um, there's only a, a few things, a few things matched with this one. One thing I am noticing uh, is when I set up this uh, instrument rack for Massive, all the kind of macro names were the original names from the first preset. So what I probably will do, um, maybe not now, but is basically rename all these macro knobs to just macro one, macro two, and so on. Um, not sure we're going to have a way around that. Uh, maybe I have to look into it, but just means that when it says filter here it's not actually filter anymore and all that kind of stuff but whatever uh, let's have a play about try and find a cool sound <laughs> For that second noise we just added in, I'll add some side chain compression to it and um, give it that kind of pumpy effect, uh, but not right now. So, right, let's add another little noise. Um, how long have I recorded so far? 19 minutes. Uh, I'm not even sure if this will make a good video or not. Oh well, whatever. Probably stick it up for the lulls. Add sound, massive. Sexy girl, sounds pretty sexy.
right. So I record something in. Right, now I'm thinking I should probably be quantizing to 132 instead of 16, so we'll just hit quantize, change that to 32. Sorted, now it's finding a few little cool little noises to make it sound complicated. We've got our kind of main kind of basic kind of electro melody going on. So add track, um, massive again. Back to device, I'm going to choose a different preset, so let's see what sounds pretty rad. Um, robot dive, that sounds rad. Alright, let's find a cool noise. First of all, we'll just kind of twiddle these so it's, everything kind of uh, matches up with the macros in Massive. <laughs> advanced tip if you got this far that's the pitch bend so not sure how useful that is
so we're going to tweak the, the volume of that track down a bit so could just use the mouse in live but um, just for the sake of it let's kind of use the push so hit volume and then kind of tweak the volumes for each track here <laughs> Right, so now I think maybe one or two more tracks full of these little weird little noises that are all in key. Um, just kind of give it a bit more kind of complicated interest. And then all it would take is some kind of mixing and some kind of sidechain compression and some effects and maybe a bit of automation to make that a cool little complex drum melody. So to add some more stuff in. So add track, let's pick another little massive again. And I'm going to pick another preset. Um, Funk vibrato cut. That sounds pretty funky. That'll do. Right back to device. Let's, um, let's find a cool. Remember, just twiddle these so they kind of take over the the macros built in. Uh, so in fact, only only these three do anything in this particular preset. So yeah, let's give it a go. Be sweet, let's add some that in. sweet I'm making at least one or two more little more subtle little noises maybe no more melodic kind of stuff so it's got two main melodies going on and then yeah pretty much just delays effects kind of maybe some reverb tweaking and automation some mixing some side chain compression and yeah we've got some cool little complex thing on the way so sweet so we're gonna get a massive um, Cool. So if you're if you're wondering if this, if this is slow or not, um, I am taking my time a bit, and this is the first time I've kind of done this workflow. So theoretically, it will be quicker once I get used to it. Uh, what sounds cool? Maybe beautiful envelope. That sounds beautiful. Right. Back to device. Let's find a cool. Remember, let's twiddle these dudes just so they kind of take over the kind of actual setting, the actual macros and massive. Oh, that's the master volume. Don't want to be fucking with that. Right. Cool. Sounds pretty cool. Sounds pretty cool.
just don't like that. Let's delete that. Didn't like the sound of that. Let's try again. adding in one more kind of massive noise and then what we could do at some stage is maybe add some swing or some kind of kind of yeah move things off the grid a bit for one of the main melodies at some stage either that or if we add some kind of kind of delays that aren't kind of synced up synced up with the grid then that'll add some kind of more kind of more dancey swing because if you have absolutely everything on the grid it sounds a little bit straight so um We'll see how that goes, but yeah, let's add in another layer of massive for now. As you've noticed, it's kind of nice because because obviously we've chosen our scale. Wherever we kind of press them to add in another note, it will stay in key, which is super important with complex row because it's like, although it sounds a bit random sometimes, it really isn't random at all. Um, everything's in key and it just follows melodies and stuff. So I'm going to open up another preset. Um... You know it. Oh, I know it. I turned I turned down the zombie dance floor for that as well, so you know it. It's better be exciting. Yes, it is exciting. Right, let's just take over these macros so we can use them. Sounds like a lead by itself, but whatever. We're going to use it to augment this other lead. Um, maybe turn it down a bit already. Cool. record my pitch bending or not. Let's have a go. I didn't record it in well at all, so I might have to just manually fix this. Um, let's quantize that to the grid, move it forward a bit. Cool. Um, I'm going to go to pit, MIDI control, pitch bend. So I recorded a bit of the pitch bend, but what we're going to do is basically just draw in these pitch bends ourselves because I recorded it like a mong. So I'm, I'm the sort of person that won't just use the push for the sake of it. Um, sometimes it can be a bit better to like just do stuff by hand, even though if you get inspired by the push. So. Let's see what that sounds like. Sometimes it can be nice to kind of take inspiration from the push when you kind of vibe in and then just draw it in manually because you won't be able to record it in that smooth. So sweet, let's see what we got. <laughs> Now 
needs a lot of mixing and all that kind of stuff but you know what that's an idea right there that's the basis of something so sweet i think we'll call it there for um for this little video uh, it's been long and unplanned but you know what sometimes videos are called for like that um if that sentence made any sense so sweet i've been multiplier um i probably stick the stick up some of these videos every now and then just kind of see me kind of using them and making mistakes and kind of being a bit slow and not doing things efficiently because that's part of everything you know sometimes it's good to see people do that so um yeah i think i'll continue to put up some of these longer ones kind of just like in session videos uh you don't have to watch them so don't bitch at me if you don't like to watch 30 something minutes 38 minutes of stuff because you don't have to watch it so go watch kind of cat videos if that's what you want to watch so sweet uh yeah i think i'm loving this push thing gonna come up with some more ideas now i've got a afternoon free to make shit so that's what i'm gonna do sweet oh uh, yeah laters